hi how's it we're in part i believe of four i was speaking about how the devil can create nothing and that there is no such thing as an innocent spell caster or an innocent sangoma or an innocent witch or whatever because it's all using dark magic and the devil comes to steal kill and destroy and so if you're getting anything from a devilish environment then you have stolen it you have killed something and you have destroyed somewhere else so um there is this movie from very long ago that God uh, always puts in my mind to help me explain this situation. Nah. It's called The Button or something. It is a very ominous, eerie, old school movie where basically there is this like guy with half a face that has been chewed off or something that comes to the door of people that are struggling with a particular issue, right? And he's got this like button, this box that has a red button in the center of it. And he goes to the couple and says, I understand that your child is dying from leukemia in hospital and the technology that is required in order to cure this baby of yours costs 500,000 US dollars well if you press this button today you will get a million US dollars so your baby can get cured but understand that the um, what do you call this the, the ramification of it or the twist in this whole thing uh, the catch essentially is that somebody in a completely different location on earth that you don't know that you've never seen is gonna die they're gonna die but you don't know them and I mean it's a huge temptation somebody's gonna die you don't know them so I mean whatever and so bah Cameron Diaz goes and presses the button because she wants her baby healed or whatever I forgot the plot of the story altogether but if you've seen that movie you will understand what I'm talking about lo and behold one year later some other couple is con is confronted by the same man with the same di sort of dilemma and they press a button and guess who dies one of the members of that family so basically Cameron Diaz and her husband with the child they end up getting into some altercation and somebody gets shot in it and killed so basically it comes back around again booyah karma style except i don't believe in karma i'm a christian but i'm using it for the purpose of this particular analogy um you have to steal life and power from someone and then give it to another in the kingdom of darkness that's how it operates they do not have a factory from which they brand spanking you produce things in order to give them to people who consult an alternative god other than the god of the universe they have to steal because that's just what they do they steal they kill and they destroy so when you consult anyone other than God to get what you want in this world understand that you are literally doing something that you are not gonna know what you're doing in a completely different part of the earth and that individual you're stealing from you don't know them you therefore are comfortable to just press that red button but it's gonna come back to you you have put yourself in a position to be easily stolen from and so therefore one day somebody gonna press the same button using a different sangoma and now you're gonna be the one that's gonna lose the wife you're gonna be the one that's gonna lose the child the job that you did gain in an un, in an um, ill-gotten way etc I could go on so therefore this guy upon then taking what do you call this uh, the services of a sangoma in order to get a job a, a job type establishment thing in order for him to get this job he had to have stolen it from somebody else that job belonged to someone else again let me digress ever so slightly there is this one chicky that I used to work with also at MTN that came in via some other way you know like the thief that comes to steal kill and destroy there was so you know gossip flee from gossip I will confess however that I was privy to that gossip and so I shall use it to edify might as well launder it with the gospel um, it was not understood as to how in the world she got that job because she did not have experience now I come from a previous career as a project slash program manager for MTN and uh, if at all you have worked as a project slash program manager for MTN you would know the rigorous uh, process to get into that job at all the number of years of experience that you need to have alongside the qualifications that you need to have um, if at all you do not have a qualification you would likely have had to like shadow some person for like two three years before they will even consider you for an interview type establishment thing anyway yeah so it's not easy to get in and on top of that the degrees that they tend to require they are either a business degree or some kind of electrical engineering degree etc I could go on so before I became 
I got promoted to project manager. I used to work as a program coordinator. And so I was seated. I was basically an administrator for project management office. So uh, whenever my boss wanted new PMs, I every so often was privy to the CVs that were coming in from HR. So I got to see just the level of skill that people needed to have in order to come into the jobs. Some of the guys that were like, like cut off, not that, what do they call that? Shortlisted. I was like, but look at the amount of years this guy has worked. Look at the lofty um, qualifications that this guy has. Why, why don't you want to interview him? And my boss would then give a reason and I'd be like, okay, you know, you understand, you see things in your own eyes. I get it, whatever. Moving on, we throw that CV out into the dustbin and we don't call the candidate. I therefore knew, based on my years as uh, an administrator, what it took to become a project manager at MTN. I struggled in and of myself to pierce into that veil. If anything, I interviewed initially at MTN for project management, having come from Kijima before. And the guy liked me so much that he was like, look, you're not experienced enough, but I like you. Do you mind taking a demotion? And then once you prove yourself a couple of months from now, then we'll see if we can promote you. I took it because I wanted to leave that former organization like desperately because I, I for the life of me, I couldn't deal. Good thing, right? Uh, so I had to be demotivated first before, not demotivated, sorry, but demoted. I had to get demoted before getting promoted again so I was a project manager then I became an administrator and then a project manager again and then program manager so I did a little bit of a I allowed myself to compromise in that way because you know anything to go and grab the future anywho so that was what I did so I struggled I had to prove myself for two years that guy told me a uh, six months I spent two years proving myself do you understand I had to prove myself now knowing that having that um, information at my disposal alongside having seen the CVs of people who even got rejected for interviews at all to come and work as project managers at MTN. When this one girl came in and she ended up being a friend of mine just by the way anyway whatever moving on when she came into the organization she not only had had a two-year sabbatical after getting married to her husband but in the previous job that she had she was working as an administrator she quit the job haphazardly because she was upset with her boss so there was just like an abrupt stop she did not have as much work experience as the regular man on the street and that job was like her second or her third job or something it was weird like that her qualification just some certificate that was not anything at all that M10 would tend to look at um, for a project manager job within an intermediate or senior space they were looking for an intermediate project manager to senior to fill a particular seat that was vacant do you understand this girl rocked up okay and just passed the interview and got it I don't know how many of my colleagues that I when I was in the come up striving to become a project manager that in and of themselves were graduates interns trying to become permanent as PMs I don't know how many of them had knocked on the, my boss's door whenever positions became vacant people quit their jobs and now a, a position was open I don't know how many of them had knocked on some I'm an intern I've been a graduate for three years please can I please 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 I don't want my contract to continue to get renewed I just want to be permanent now I want to be able to pay bills now I want security I want to buy a house like please interview me you know they would send in their CVs and this boss would be like no I'm sorry I need more qualified people I need more qualified people in my particular department I need grander qualification if anything she wanted to reject me uh, but if it wasn't for the motivation by my former boss to do that because my former boss was her boss so she was like you're gonna take a rabble type establishment thing uh, after I interviewed it was hard to get into my team it was really difficult to get into my team and even graduates that had been like put in the time and shown their work ethic and showed their faces in the organization they were trusted they were known they knew what they could do they could not get an interview with my boss let me go into part um i think five i don't know